Hello everyone, this is Derek with Reef Automation Tutorials for Neptune Systems. Today I'm going to go over the FMM installation and programming. For those that don't know, the FMM is versatile. You can use it for leak detection, you can use it for flow monitoring, you can also use it for optical sensing. And we're going to go over the different things that you can use it for, and we're going to also go how to basically program it if you were to purchase just the FMM. So let's get started. So the Neptune FMM is going to be installed via the Aquabus cable. It gets power via the Aquabus cable. It has four inputs. Each input here can be used for different things, which we're going to go over the different items that you can plug into it. It then has a 24 volt output ACC there, and then it has a power input. Now the power input is only used for the ACC. So if you're not going to be using the 24 output, to program it for a solenoid, let's say, or a pump, then you don't need to power this FMM. The FMM is 100% powered by the Aquabus and can be used just for the Aquabus. So let's go over some of the items that you can plug into it. You can plug in flow sensors, which will monitor the flow. And as you can see, each one has different flow rates. So the two inch has a flow rate from 300 to 3000. The one inch has a flow rate from 150 to 1500. The half inch, 30 to 250. And the fourth inch, which will only have a small flow rate of 3 to 12 gallons per hour. So generally, if you're using the fourth inch, you're going to be using that on an RO system or you're going to be using that on possibly a calcium reactor to know if you are getting flow through it. It's a very nice little device that you can use. The one that I use most of the time is your optical sensor, which is the OS-1. You have a couple different leak detectors. You have the flat or the solid. Now, the flat is meant to go possibly under a carpet or possibly under any type of smaller area. It doesn't have a lot of weight to it, so it moves around quite easily, whereas the LD-2 has a little more weight to it, so you can stick it on a stand somewhere. So these are what you would use with the 24 volt output. You have the PMUP or the pump. Usually you can use this as an ATO. You can also use the FMM 24 volt for a solenoid valve. And again, if you're going to use either one of these, you're going to need the 24 volt power supply, which they make in the European model and they make in the US model. So those are what you can use on the FMM. So we'll go through how to program it and what it kind of looks like when you first gets going. So here is my system, and if we go over to modules, which is this guy right here, you can see I have a number of FMMs. So when you first plug the FMM in, it's going to give you an address, and then it's going to give you a number. Now, the address is going to be to the left here, so 29, and then the number is going to be the port. So for instance, let's work with my office FMM. So if I click on that, you will see that I can use it at address 23, and I can also set this up for a specific sensor. Now, I typically just set these to auto detect, but if you uncheck that, you can manually input what you're using. Generally, auto detect will work just fine. You can also do liters per hour or gallons per hour, depending on where you're located and what you'd like to see on the screen. And that's it in terms of setting up the FMM. Now, when you first get the FMM, like I said, it's going to show you the address and it's going to show you a number. Now, if we go through some of mine here, I have a switch 25-1, which would indicate, as I mentioned, would be your FMM address 1, switch 1, or FMM 25, switch 1. And this would tell you, depending on what you have plugged in, what it's going to produce. Now, my link A9-1 is going to be my FMM power. Usually it'll start with link in front of it. So another way you can do this is go up to here and go up to your outlets, and anything in the outlets is going to come from the FMM. So anything that's 24 volt here is going to be your FMM. And again, that's the 24 output. So link A71 means that this is my FMM power at address 7. So if I click on that, I can program that. And it will tell me right here that that is my fish FMM2. Now, again, I can click on any one of these. So 
let's go back and I'll click on link 25 one and that tells me that's my reef FMM one now again it's best to label these so when you go to modules I'll show you where you can label them it's always best to label all of your modules otherwise they'll keep the standard label and that's right here in the labeling and I recommend you label all of them so you know which ones they are so again if you go to your outlets which is the outlet icon you can see all your 24 volts and again that's coming from the FMM or if you have an EB832 it could be coming from that as well so depending on what you're using and what your address is you'll know which one it is as long as you label each one accordingly so now to know what you have plugged into each one you're actually going to go to your inputs it kind of looks like a little thermometer here you go into your thermometer and then you can check what's plugged into what so for instance if I have a switch plugged into one of mine, it's going to show up as a switch. If I have a flow sensor plugged in, it's going to show up as a flow sensor. So depending on what you're using, you're going to see either a switch or a flow sensor. Now a flow sensor, obviously we saw the flow sensing. Switch can be either an optical sensor or can be a leak sensor. So if I click on switch here, it'll tell me that digital switch 2, so number 2, port 2, on my FMM is named Reef F FMM 2. And then that's where I can label that particular sensor. And again, I know that because it's address 29, which is going to be my FMM address, which I get from my module. And then 2 is the port I get from the FMM. And that's how I know what's plugged into what. So when you first get this programmed, you're going to get, if you're using a leak sensor or you're using an optical sensor, you're going to get something that looks like this, open and closed. Now, open typically means there's no water. Closed means there is water. So if you want to program it, for instance, for a leak, you go up to your leak sensor or you go up to your alarm or you go up to wherever you want to program it. And the programming would be quite simple. You would say if, let's say mine are labeled reef leak. If reef leak is closed, then on. Now, what that means is if one of my leak sensors senses water, which is closed, then I'm going to get um, I'm going to get my alarm to come on. Now you can do the opposite. You can say open. So if I don't have water, I would like my alarm to go off. And of course, you can say I don't. I want to turn off my alarm when it's open. And you can do the same thing with an optical sensor, as I mentioned. You can say if leak. If this was your optical sensor, so I have a couple of them called. Let's see, low. So I have, if my reef low optical sensor is open, which means it doesn't have any water, which means I want to be alerted that my sump is low, I can then say on. So that's how you do basic programming with sensors. Now flow sensors are a little bit different. So we're going to go back over to our main page or our main dashboard. You will see I have my flow sensors right here. Now what's nice about flow sensors is you can actually go into their advanced tab and you can set up an alarm right here. So you can actually say if it's below a certain amount to alert me, if it's above a certain amount, or if it's within a certain range, I want you to alert me. You can also program your flow sensors so if something is high or low, I would like you to do something. For instance, if I wanted my pump, here's one of my pumps. Now if I wanted my pump to turn off if, the, if it's sensing a low amount of water, or it could be a high amount of water, you can say if my reef return pump or reef return flow is less than 50 then on now what this does is if your return flow has been driven all the way to 50 i want you to turn this outlet on vice versa i can say if my reef return is less than 50 i want you to turn it off so you could do something like this if your return is going to be greater than 100 then turn it on so you can do a number of things here with the flow rates as well just for basic examples we wouldn't be actually doing this in real world but this is if you wanted to have something turn on and off based on flow you just put in the digit and then it will based off the flow rate if you have it for liters or gallons per hour it'll associate that so I have mine set up for gallons per hour. So my reef return right now is 157 gallons per hour. I also have a UV over here, and I can tell my flow rate of my UV is 184. And yeah, with my UV, I'd probably want to get an alert if it went pretty low. So 
I can click on the alert here, give it a second to populate, and let's try that one more time. Sometimes uh, this little gear gets pushed accidentally. So if I hit the number itself, it'll give me a graph of what my flow has been. But if I hit the gear, you will be able to get into the settings of it. You'll be able to change adjustments. So you can see I have a sensor here that when my UV goes above 250, which I don't want my UV to be more than 250 because then the UV isn't going to work properly, I want it to alert me. So that could be from accidentally changing the output, accidentally changing the valve that's on there, to anything other than lower than 250, I want to be alerted. So that's the basics of the FMM. Uh, there's not much to it, actually. Once you get one of them and hook it all up, uh, it's pretty simple and pretty easy to program. Now, a couple other things to note is you can also purchase the ATK. Now, if we go over to other solutions on Neptune's site, this is the ATK. Now, the ATK comes with an FMM. It comes with a P-Ump. It comes with a power, uh, power adapter. It comes with two sensors. It comes with the float valve and it comes with the, all the tubing. Now, if you were to purchase this by itself and plug it into the wall, it'll automatically work as a normal auto top-off. Once you've plugged in the Aquabus cable to this FMM, it is no longer going to run off of its basic program and then you therefore need to program it. So again, this will work just like a normal ATK by itself without an APEX system. But once you plug the APEX system in, you're going to need to make sure that you program it. Now, this is a nice little kit because it comes with the FMM, it comes with two sensors, it comes with everything you need. And again, there is a task for programming the ATK. So if you ever were to get an ATK and you wanted to put it into the system, you can program it right here with leak sensor, low water, or the ATK auto top-off kit just from the tasks menu. So you can also program a flow sensor from the task menu. Everything I basically went over, you can do from the task menu as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you learned something about the FMM. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, again, we do live streams every week. So if you want to join us, we usually give away things during those live streams. If you haven't liked or subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do that and get alerted when I do new videos on programming. So again, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.